tonight we're going to really, um, I would say, um, go back to Sunday and try to look at what we learned on Sunday and go a little bit deeper into that and see uh, some of the things that God basically is teaching us and revealing unto us. And my prayer is that by the time we will leave here tonight, there would be an understanding of how we can really tap into uh, the blessing of God. There are certain things that we don't really understand most of the time. And because of that, we lose or we don't really walk into the blessings that God has prepared for us. But we will look tonight um, into Genesis chapter 26, and we will see what really happened to Isaac uh, on the journey from, I, I would say, the journey from uh, his, um, from the, uh, the journey from the farming into uh, Rehoboth. But I call this evening's uh, uh, message the journey to Rehoboth and beyond. The journey to Rehoboth and beyond. Amen. So we will try and look at, and I'll be, I'll try and be pretty much fast so we can really finish. We're looking at the whole of Genesis chapter 26. The whole of Genesis chapter 26 and see what we can uh, find there. Amen. All right. Okay. Now there was a farming in the in the land. Can you let it fit well so I can just now there was farming in the land besides the previous farming in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gera. And I'm reading up to verse 5 and then uh, we'll look at it. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed. Verse 5 Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him keeping what? Keeping my commands, my decrees and my instructions. Many times, sometimes we decide to keep the commands and not the decrees. Sometimes we decide to keep the instructions and not. But Abraham was, uh, was uh, a man who really will keep whatever God asked him to. Amen. Whatever God said was important. Many a times, some of the things that God said, we tend to choose and pick what will suit us. Amen. I, tonight, I, I'm going to engage you. Um, I will speak a lot about this, but I also try as much as I can to engage you. Because we need to understand what we are going through. We need to understand these things. And uh, if we understand them well, we will really be able to make uh, um, an impact on others. And we ourselves will receive the blessing of God. Now, if you watch carefully, you realize that the journey to Rehoboth started with crisis. You know, after he has deceived his brother, after um, um, uh, Isaac has deceived his brother, that is in the previous uh, chapter, chapter 25, um, after he had really deceived him and taken his um, bet right. After that, we moved straight into 26, and Bible said, now there was a famine in the land. 
besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Now, because there was famine, because there was crisis, he was trying to run away. He was trying to move to where he can find food to eat. And which is normal. If there are crises in where you are, you tend to move on. When there were crises in Ghana in the uh, 80s, a lot of people traveled. People, I mean, I remember a lot of fishermen went from Ghana to Ivory Coast because they couldn't get fish even in the Ghana waters. And now a lot of them are, are staying there still because they made families there and all that. So if you go to Elmina and places like that, uh, they have people in Ivory Coast. And they, most of them went because of what happened in the 80s when we had the bushfires and the farming and everything. People moved. Amen. So it's normal. In, in the times of crisis, people begin to move. Now, my question to you is that in the times of crisis, what do you do? Because all of us go through crisis of uh, various forms. What do you do? He made his mind. Watch it carefully. He made his mind and decided to move. Hallelujah. The, and Bible says that the Lord appeared to Isaac, verse 2. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Beloved in the Lord, what I want you to understand tonight, because many of us, when we go through crisis, we begin to ask, is God really with me? Why should I go through crisis if God is with me? Hallelujah. But if you look at this carefully, you realize that Isaac, amen, you realize that Isaac was serving the Lord. We are not told whether he consulted God before he moved. But if you look at the story, he didn't. And his mind was to go to Egypt. And God could read his mind. Hallelujah. God knew where he was going to end up. So God, I mean, intervened. You see, when you have a relationship with God, when you make certain plans and certain decisions, God intervenes and begins to really tell you that I don't want you to follow this one. I want you to take this plan. Hallelujah. And what many times when we have made up our mind, nothing moves us. Even if God comes down to talk to us, we decide to do what we have to do. And I want you to really mark this. I, I hope you have your notebooks here. I want you to really mark this. Because these are very important things that are going to guide you in your walk with the Lord. Because if you are going to really get to Rehoboth and beyond, then you need to really obey certain instructions when the Lord gives it to us. We have our plans. Who doesn't have a plan here? Everyone has a plan. Everyone has a plan. Somebody, I mean, even the students have a plan. They want to really go to school, uh, complete their education, become who they want to become. But does it have God's approval? Does it have God's approval? And is God really giving us an alternate plan? And are we listening even to hear? Because like Isaac, sometimes what happens to us is that we, we are in a certain kind of place and seriously because of certain crises, because of certain situations, we decide to make decisions without consulting God. But because of the relationship we have with him, God now, most of the time, decides to intervene and tell us that, look, uh, although you've made this decision without consulting me, I am your father, and I know this is not going to help you, so I want you to change the plan. This is what I want you to do. Hallelujah. Have you had any experience like that before? Where you really wanted to do something, but you could really hear that God doesn't want you to do that. And God is really telling you that, change that plan. Amen. Have you had anything, any experience like that before? 
or you are not sensitive to the Holy Spirit, so even when he speaks, you can't hear him speak. Amen. And that depends on the relationship you have with him. We all do make mistakes. And I believe this is one of the mistakes Isaac did by not consulting God. But yet, God really came up and then spoke to him. Hallelujah. Isaac is not a man who doesn't know crisis. Isaac knew crisis because, you know, Isaac, um, Abraham died at the age of 175. Isaac was born when Abraham was 100 years old. So at this point in time, Abra uh, Isaac was over 75 years. So he wasn't a kid. Amen. And he has his own children. He has uh, Jacob and Esau where they had really, uh, Jacob had deceived Esau and tricked him to take his birthright and all that. So he is not a kid. And he knew that when, I mean, times pass, uh, when there are crises, people make certain decisions. He worked with his father for at least 75 years. So he knew what he was doing. Amen. But God interrupted him. Hallelujah. God intervened, God interrupted, and God said that, hey, guy, uh, you are mine, and I don't want you to go to Egypt. I don't want you to go to Egypt. Now, I want you to learn something from this place. Hmm. This is quite interesting. For us, these are experiences for us. These are things for us to learn a lot from. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because if you look closely, you realize that after Isaac, after Isaac, and watch me carefully. I mean, I just want you to really hear what I'm saying. After Isaac, you remember Jacob ended up in Egypt. You do you also remember that when Jesus was being pursued, he ended up in Egypt. Why is it that God didn't want Isaac to go to Egypt? So what everybody does doesn't mean that it's good for us. God in his own plan will have plan A for me and will have a different plan for you. The same God who didn't want Isaac to go, the same God made Jacob go. The same God made Jesus go. Hallelujah. So when God is really planning things for us, we may not understand we may not understand but he gives specific instructions and in this case he said that look i don't want you to go to egypt i want you to live in this land and i want i'm going to bless you in this land the fact that somebody would go somewhere the fact that someone else did it in another way doesn't mean you are going to do it in the same way God is sovereign. God is powerful. God knows everything. And God is going to do it different with you. Hallelujah. We need to really pay attention because the way God deals with us is different from the way he deals with somebody else. If we will pay attention and if we will really yield unto him, he knows how he's going to deal with us. He knows the instructions he's going to give to you. He knows how he's going to do it. He is God. And he loves you so much that his plan for you is so unique that it might be different from the plan for somebody else. Hallelujah. And then God told him that when he had told him not to go there, from verse 3 he says that... Um, Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. You see, this takes me to Isaiah 119. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. This is crisis time. 
this is not ordinary time this is farming this is a time that the rain is not falling this is the time that the people even living on the land are suffering everyone is struggling and therefore that is why he didn't want to stay in uh, Dera he wanted to continue but God said that look I don't want you to go to Egypt I want you to stay in this place there are times there are crises God wants you to be in the middle of the crisis hallelujah because God is going to use you to prove something hallelujah so God said look everybody is leaving but you don't leave stay God said don't go anywhere because I'm going to bless you in this place your blessing is not in another place your blessing is here I'm going to bless you in this place amen so he said I will be with you and will bless you for to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham I'm going to confirm it here not in another place not in Egypt you see, it is time for me to do what I want to do. But I want you to be here. I want you to be here. Time is, the time is now. I'm going to, I am God and I'm going to do what I have to do. But I want you to see what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use you to prove something. Hallelujah. So, God told him, don't move an inch. Stay. Many of us will say, but there's crisis. There's crisis. And look, there's no food. Everyone is struggling. Many are leaving. Many are, no, I have to go. Who are you going to listen to? Your mind or God? Amen. Amen. Some of us, you see, we miss the blessing because we don't listen. We are not sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is saying. We are not sensitive. And because we are not sensitive, God is doing something and we, be, we, we tend to miss it. Because we don't pay attention. Hallelujah. And he goes on to tell him about what he told his father. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And will give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Verse 5. Why? 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 Why all this blessing that was on your father and that's coming upon you? He said, because Abraham did something. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him. Keep in mind. You see, the, the blessing will come but like i said if you are willing and obedient you will eat the best of the land then you see there are times you don't see anything on the land but the truth of the matter is that you didn't create the land god did and god knows what he can put in the land you see let me tell you something not too long ago i mean like if you look closely from uh previous chapters we, we could see um, a time where um, uh, Hagar was running away with uh, the son Ishmael and they got to a place and they were there and they, there was no water there was nothing and uh, what's her name uh, 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 Ishmael was uh, in Hagar's mind Ishmael was about to die and they didn't want to see his son, uh, his son die so he was just crying the son was crying and everything but when god really showed up the place that there was no water that they have i believe they roamed around they couldn't find water anywhere that was why they had given up and they wanted to die but when god showed up he said look there and there was water there you see the one thing we i want you to understand is that i don't want you to give up at any given time in your life don't give up on god for he won't give up on you why because he's able watch it not only did he do, do it for hagar he did it for uh jacob as well jacob had used uh, a stone as a pillow and when he woke up and he saw god and he saw the angel he saw all that he saw what he said was that god was here and i didn't know the fact that you didn't know doesn't mean god is not there 
the fact that uh, um, Hagar didn't know that he could find water there doesn't mean God was not there. Wherever God is, he can make anything happen in the moment. Hallelujah. And it happened in Jesus' time. After Jesus had died and he had resurrected, and the people, Peter and his friends, had gone fishing and they couldn't get anything. When they came back, Jesus said, just cast your net on the right side. Hallelujah. And, and they were surprised. We've gone all, I mean, we couldn't, no. He said, just cast it here. Hallelujah. What you need to do is to obey. Because he can make a way where there seems to be no way. I want you to understand, you are here tonight because God wants you to understand that he's going to make something for you. But what he's going to do for you, at the moment you think there is nothing, it's not possible. You think that, ah, but I've, I mean, I've, I've gotten to my wit's end. There is nothing I can do anymore. I mean, I mean, I've tried my best, nothing happened. Look, to change your mind. If you can only be obedient unto him and will hear him say what he wants to say to you and you will do what he wants you to do, you are going to, in fact, he is going to make um, um, a, a river in the desert for you. Because he is God. I want you to understand that he's God. The places that you think there is nothing there, God is going to make something there. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter whether you sell groundnuts or you do what. God can turn that thing around because there is something in that thing that you don't see. But when God opens your eyes, you begin to see it. Hallelujah. What he needs from you is your obedience. That's what God needs from you. I have a couple of questions for you now. Hallelujah. Question one. We are all Christians, but what do we do? And I want your contribution because I don't want to be talking uh, uh, this evening when you don't talk. When you face crisis, what do you do? When you are faced with crisis, when you get into trouble, when you get into a situation that is tough for you, what do you do? I want to know tonight. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, Adabra. Amen. Amen. Well, to me, sometimes I try to solve it with my own strength. When it doesn't work, then I consult God. Okay. Now, um, and it's happened time and time again. What are you learning tonight? And what decisions are you making tonight? What I've learned so far is that whenever I'm in crisis, I need to consult God for the solution. Amen. Okay, good. God bless you. Uh, anyone else? What do you do when you are in crisis? What decisions do you make when you are in crisis? Mm -hmm. Hey, are you guys here? Okay, yes, uh, Joseph and then uh, Sarah. Okay, I think for me personally, when something happens, I try to use my logic or something to see whether... Because you're a mathematician. <laughs> whether I can solve it by my own. So if I see that, no, this one is beyond me, then I begin to think about maybe where am I going to get the solution from. I personally, I try to, maybe I'll try to see if man can help. And if I see that, then, then I have to go to God. Wow. Amen. That, that, no, you see, what, what I want us to do tonight is to really face the reality. Because if we, most of the time, we lie to ourselves and we don't get solutions. Because we're lying to ourselves. If we can face the reality, we can then open our heart to receive instructions from God. Amen. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Um, yes, um, Sarah. Okay, yeah. Daddy, for me personally, most of the time, anytime I face problem, I seek uh, sympathy of man. You seek solutions from man. And, uh, where I want someone to be like encouraging me in this time. But I've come to realize something in life that all those times that I've been seeking those sympathy from man, there's nothing working for me until I make a decision. 
until I make a decision that I will leave everything to God. So even now, uh, I think this uh, is a blessing to me where I have to put my all into Him. That in everything I will do is my all. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Yes, uh, Didi. And then Abi. Thank you, Daddy. Um, most of the time, um, I feel bad about myself, cry, and try to see what man can do. But if I realize nobody is helping, then I consult God by praying. But what I've realized today is that in the praying, I don't listen. I just tell God. And then you walk away. And yes, without listening. So... I remain in that same situation without any solution and still think that man will bring the answer. But the answer is in after praying, what do I hear from God? What is God telling me? Mm. But today I've really come to realize that even after all, I need to listen to God. And after listening, I need to obey. Amen. 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 Wow. That's powerful. Yes, um, Abby. Um, yes. It, it, to be frank, I mean, I also do the same. In the past, I would try to, you know, come up with options and also seek um, advice or speak from men what they can do. Um, but I've also come to realize even most of times, also, this leads me to something else as well. But you said something just by which is profound. I, I think it's a big that where, what, I mean, I, I need to walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. You know, it should seem, even though the thing might not look like it's possible, in God, God is making, and you know, with God, everything is possible. Amen. So that is what I need to be, you know, just focus that yes, indeed, we can make even their life become, you know, better. And so just also add to this, you were asking, about two years ago, there was a, a, lot, a lot of crisis that I was going through financially. I'm just saying it to show that we're encouraged. Is I think it's in line with what we are we yeah. were preaching. Um, and I kept praying. It was a, it was very severe that I needed to get out of this <laughs> the country. It was very very you know. So I started actually I started asking friends. I had a friend who was in Dubai. And so with what I had in the course with him, I could do this. So to see what I had the possibility, so I didn't want to go back to the U.S. and stuff. And so through that, engage, I started off again with what he had, she had suggested. You know, and after that, I decided to pray. We were doing a fast. So it was one of my prayer topics that they felt of my heart. I need to still pray and see God's will. Will in that, in what yeah, he, she yes, was suggesting. But then to come back to I didn't do that, but I, I went ahead of him, then later I he had came to back, yeah. back and say that if it is war, then, you know, that should happen for me to move to the Dubai back when he's looking at some teaching and uh, the opportunities there. You know, so through that prayer and all that, I mean, it, it just fell back. I, it wasn't God's you know, uh, plan for you. Plan for but, but just to just to add to this, to glorify to God that through it all and some of the preaching, I remember we were praying about, uh, I think it was Genesis, we said um, the Isaac stood in the same, same year. year. Yeah. And that was the, the, um, the verse that I kept on praying into that, you know, just during even the, the, the lockdown and all that. And then that's when uh, my mom's issue also happened and God provided. And then I remember you prophesied, I came to you and then we prayed and it said, God is going to give me even bigger, um, how do you call it, uh, contract. Yeah. That was the expectation. And then uh, there was also a time you said that um, um, we were using this thing, uh, this is also encourage us that if we are willing and obey, you know, we need the best of life. And I was also tapping into that, that goodness should follow us. Yeah. And not the other way. And I think the actually, I, I don't even know. I have a testimony, but I just want to encourage everybody that that has come to pass, and I'm now being paid. I've got a contract that is about what we should do. 
I mean, I didn't know that. I Amen. mean, at that time, I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know. I, do, I just don't know. But this is why I'm saying that where we, are, where, where we are looking is, you know, God has something different for us. We shouldn't, you know, we need to just obey and have faith. We shouldn't walk by sight what we see. It might be dry land, but then God has a plan for our lives. So if we need to just obey and trust him for oh, Amen. I mean, this, this, you see, this, this is, this is where the issues are. Sometimes we always believe that. I mean, like, I mean, in my crisis, and he, she had a plan. Just like Isaac, he wanted to go to Egypt. Amen. So she had a plan, but then we had. Um, uh, fasting around the same time <laughs> we were um, praying around the same time we were preaching around the same time I, I remember when I preached on that topic and uh, I basically not only that but I also uh, uh, even said that we some are going to get overnight blessing and all kinds of things you remember that yeah and we had testimonies to that effect and the, the interesting thing is that as we sat in the office and she was basically like I mean, you know, when you're going through crisis, it, it's not easy. It's not easy. But my joy is that she cried to the Lord. And when she came, we prayed to the Lord. And as we prayed to the Lord, I didn't say, I mean, to tell you the truth, the things, what you are even saying, I don't remember. Because in the moment, we prayed. And God really, I remember the time she came in, but I can't remember everything that I said. But, but God, as we prayed, God said what he said, that you will be blessed. Amen. And you're going to get bigger contracts than what you thought you had had. And now, it has happened. But I, I now remember that because that was a foreign contract, I, I mentioned that you are going to get foreign contracts. And basically, you see, what I want you to understand is that God is working. If we can only take our time, and really respond to what he's saying to us and obey. You see, the key is in obedience. The key is in obedience. And as we obey, God now begins to open doors and God now brings opportunities. It's, it's, you have no idea what sometimes we all go through. Amen. But as we obey, as we take our time and obey, and hold on to him, God really provides. The consensus I, I have really, I mean, from what we have done so far, we could all really identify with the fact that the first point is not God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's what is supposed to change. That is what is supposed to change. My prayer tonight, and I would want you to pray tonight as well, that you are going to listen to God. That you are going to obey what he's going to tell you. It is not every time that what God is going to say is nice. Because look, Isaac looked at the situation and he was going to Egypt. Because God, if you are saying I should stay here, what is here for me? The place is dry. There is farming here. What should I do? I have to move on. Egypt has always been, because of the Nile and everything, Egypt has always been flourishing. So it's better to go to Egypt. Hallelujah. Many of us, when we get into crisis, we feel that we ought to go to Egypt. But what we see is not always right. Hallelujah. What we see with, the, with our eyes is not always the best. Maybe God has something else for us. Maybe what we are deciding on is not God's plan for us. Maybe God wants to use us to make a difference, to show the people that indeed there is a God in heaven. And we will see that in what we are doing tonight. Amen. I'm not too sure whether we'll be able to finish, but I just want you to really know that in life, whenever you go through any kind of crisis, any kind 
I don't care what it is, but any kind of crisis, seek to go to God. Just seek after him. Just go to him. Just ask him. And God is going to really show you his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My second question before I move on is, even though we have our plans, when God brings out a new plan, what do we do? Hallelujah. Come. Let him come. The one behind the door. Yes. Even though you have a plan, when God brings another plan, what do we do? Amen. Has it ever happened to you? Has it ever, ever happened to you that you had your own plan? Then you get a plan from God that really seems different. And it looks like, in your opinion, your plan was better. And what did you do? You've learned that you need to listen to God. Okay, all right, amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. Amen. Amen. Okay, good. Yes, yeah, anyone else? You have your plan. Have you had any experience where you had your plan and God really yeah, Joseph. The way of both in Kunu. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yes, Ima. Oh, okay. And Jeff. You lifted up your hand. Okay, yeah. Okay, I think uh, at times it's difficult to accept. Uh, Do you accept at all? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you learning tonight? Because I don't want, you see, one thing I don't want us to do, and I, I'm saying this really to encourage you. Um, I want you to understand that what we're doing tonight is God really bringing you a revelation that is going to really help you change your life. And you are going to begin to see what God is going to do in your life. I am a testimony of that. Uh, Abby is a testimony of that. In fact, he, he is a testimony of that. What's in the... Uh, uh, Francis is a te I mean, she, he shared that testimony with us where he had plans to go to Canada and uh, the whole, I mean, like, he came, we spoke about it, we prayed about it, and um, the idea was don't go, just really stay around here, and he did, and from that time he's been getting contracts that he's doing that has really been a, beneficial, a lot beneficial to him. So he had his plan. I, I mean, I don't know what would have happened if he had gone at the time. Maybe God will bring another plan later for you to travel if you want to. But the point is that at certain moments, God really brings something. And in fact, at that time, it didn't make sense to him because he was, he was doing security kind of stuff. And then he said, he was going, hey, come here. <laughs> come here. What were you doing then? No, come this way. There is one here, so come this way. You were, I mean, I think you were doing security and you were... Uh-huh. So tell us. 
Amen. Well, that was your plan. Mm -hmm. have happened if he had gone? We don't know. Even after that, he didn't believe it. After he had said to him, he came to confirm it with me. Am I God? <laughs> I will told him. So you see, when, when God is saying, now we go run. shocked because he never, when he came to me he didn't even mention Charles' name and he didn't even mention Joseph's name. Why? You were coming to trick me. <laughs> you know God had spoken already. So you know, that's what we do. When God says something and we don't want to do it we now begin to go to people and then ask and then ask and then ask. So if I had said something different, what would you have done? <laughs> oh, like go, go, go to Canada. <laughs> but you see, it's the same voice. It's the same God. And God basically made you understand that you don't have to. And you never went. And now you are here. And now you are working. And now God is even bringing you better contracts. Because bigger ones are coming. Yeah, bigger ones are coming. Hallelujah. Like, you know, it, 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 seriously, what we're saying didn't make sense. What God said through Charles, through Joseph, through, it didn't make sense. Because Canada was the bigger picture. Canada was big money. We don't know whether you'll be enslaved by this time by the people who have taken you, whether you have even ended up there, we don't know. But God saved you. Amen. Okay, you can sit down. Yes, uh huh. Daddy, I may mean, say at times it's difficult to accept. Uh, 
like what uh, Francis said, my was my education issues. I remember when you asked me, when are you going back to school? Well, I was like, I will go. So I started. Uh, whatever happened, and then I think by the last year, end of beginning of year fast, and I was given a word that you have to relax. Uh, it will be difficult, but just accept it. So I said, okay. So I started praying about it. But I realized that uh, from Thursday's uh, preaching, teaching, and then the Sunday, I realized that I was rather chasing the wrong course. Uh, I went to school out of uh, a whole lot of difficulties, so I chose the wrong course and I studied. So when I came out of uh, after high school, I had opportunity to go to GIJ. You asked me to speak to Uncle Kojo and then he said, it. he also said, relax. So I was like, what's happening to me? So I had opportunity to enter one institution as well. And I think I came to see you. Yeah, I remember vividly. I remember mommy said, go and pray about it. I was like, I had an affair. I was giving a acceptance letter that your application has been approved, so resume this particular day. The mommy said, go and pray. After we came to see him, I have a paper. <laughs> Why should I pray again? Amen. Why, why should I pray? So, it, it, it was difficult. I've been in the house for four years after high school, and it's difficult. But, after this teaching, I, I think I told uh, Uncle Joseph, uh, anything at all I used to share with him, I realized what I'm supposed to, I was supposed to use four years to study. I should have wasted my four years studying a wrong course, but I used one year, almost one year, to finish it. I, when, I think on Sunday, I mentioned that the, you go to school with someone and the person will really I mean pop, 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 then he will finish and then you'll be struggling but you will be sitting down writing remedial or not getting opportunity but by the time you get the opportunity you come and overtake them all and I didn't even know that's what is happening to him because uh, in my class I have people who are already they are into the system but it wasn't working. Why? Because they, I think the system wasn't working for them. <laughs> it wasn't working for them. So I do ask them questions, especially who, when they are, we are on the field, I ask, ah, is this thing, I think you, you, you should be doing Yeah, you should, it's actually theory. Wow. Oh. They, they did theoretical aspect of it, but so, Sunday, Thursday, Sunday made me realize that this is what God wants you. This is where God wants you to be. But in the course of that one year, there are a lot of challenges as well. Uh, I used to share with Joseph false accusations up and down. And there are good things within that one year as well, but <laughs> it is not easy. Uh, I think last, last week, Friday, Though I'm not done with the course, but I had an uh, I was I was employed full time. Oh, in the same company. You haven't even finished, but you have already got an uh, appointment. Yes. yes. Uh, I think I shared with Brother Joseph as well during the devotion that this is what is happening. But <laughs> a day before the letter will come. There are a whole lot of accusations again, and it's on hold. But I believe that there is something bigger ahead of me. After we You've we seen it too much to yes. really worry. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, you see, sometimes you've seen it too much. The enemy, and that's, I mean, I, I don't know whether, where we'll get to tonight, but I will show you certain things. 
exactly what he's saying. Exactly what he's saying. And it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a blessing that even before I will tell you what I'm going to tell you, we have somebody who has really experienced it. It is well. Uh, I'm saying this because uh, even before you be allowed to go to school fast working in Ghana and in a private institution, it's very difficult. But for us, me, I wasn't even planning to go to school within that period. The CEO of the company herself was rather planning with the HR together with my administrator to ask me why am I not going back to school? So I know this is not my, my, my own plan. So I just have to say yes, I accept it. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. You see, the way God works, yes, yesterday, only yesterday, you know, was it yesterday that I was speaking with you? Only yesterday. I was really uh, asking because we haven't spoken in a while. And yes, only yesterday we were speaking. And uh, you, you remember what I told you? Anyway, okay. So, uh, Jeff. Yeah, talk before then. Uh, before Jeff. I get to speak, I, as I'm sitting here listening to what everyone is saying, and the Holy Spirit was reminding me of the prayer we prayed yesterday that God is going to enforce his will on us. And therefore, from what you are saying, it means that uh, we, we, we cannot go according to our will because our will has failed us all this while. And God is, uh, you know, he just gave me that word, the first John five fourteen, and we stood on it to pray yesterday that God is going to enforce his will on us. And so we should put our will under his divine control. So I think if we're going to take what you are teaching us seriously, we see that it started from yesterday where God was telling us that we cannot live according to our will. We should put our will under his divine will. So it's something that it was just ringing in my ears that do you know why yesterday you prayed this prayer? You prayed this prayer, you, like you... I, I led us to pray that prayer, which means, and I didn't know this is what you are going to teach, and you didn't even know my prayer topics anyway. So I think God is telling us something that all this while that we try to do things our own, it has not worked for us. So it's about time we leave our world under His divine control. Amen. Amen. I mean, we, we just can't do things our own way any longer. Yes, Jeff. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I think you want to say like that. Uh, God's plan is the best for me. For instance, like my, you can say maybe you are going for a particular course. But you say, I like this. I don't like that. Only God will decide what is best for you. Mm -hmm. Like the other day, I was reading about this uh, Jewish guy. He said that uh, 20, 21st September, I would say, he was talking about his church called Means. Is he coming? I asked myself, really, is he coming? I read into the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like there was a man I got interested five uh, like this. Yeah, keep to me. Like one we see if we really keep his commitment. Like for example, you will trust something person, you are looking to if you trust the person. He did. He also did the other. The other did and gained something, like harvesting something from something. The other can the foolish man can do such. But like you say, like God's plan is really good, like me. I wanted to be a doctor. But when I went to university in Nigeria, like, I was a medical biologist. But I still want to be a doctor. But it's possible. But, uh, like, uh, like, over some days, I go home to the church. There are so many things I was doing. But when I started here, yeah, all those things I've been doing it. Amen. Okay. Amen. So, so, so the most important thing, like, uh, I have belief for God. And all the time, like, I know that God is taking me to somewhere. But that time, I put my mind, but I was, I was, and somebody has told me before that you, you, you will be a pastor last I said, no, it's not me. I said, <laughs> I said, no, it's not me. But all the time, like, 
like my brother like up here, he took me here. But from let's say getting to a youth now, yeah. I started where things changed for me. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't care like what I'm maybe passing through some things now. Because I'm a foreigner. I'm not in Ghana, I'm a Nigerian man. Yeah. So I come here to work and all that. Like the other day, like where I used to work, my boss was having a problem with me, say, you, 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 you will go uh, because you're a foreigner. You don't like you people, this and that. I told him, why? Me, I don't do bad things. I, do, I work for myself, to take care of myself and all that. He said, no, no, I will call you after some while. And I, I clean up. Let's say two, three days now. And I know that there's a better place for me than that place. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. God, God, God always, way, always has better plans. Yeah. He always does have better plans for us. I mean, and that's exactly what he's now teaching us to really understand so we can walk in the purposes of God. Hallelujah. So whatever it is, like you just are saying, uh, this is what I want to do, but does God want you to do that? Really, for that, just for the busy time, that I'm doing it. But what God really wants me to do, I will abide to it. Amen. And it will Amen. come to pass. Amen. Because he will let you know. You know, sometimes, like, like Isaac, I'm, I'm going to Egypt. There's hunger here. There's famine here. I'm going to Egypt. Then God says, no. Stay here. You know, if you watch the, the, uh, the life of the Israelites, many times they would want to, like when they were going into captivity, and uh, they would say, uh, false prophets would tell them that, oh, no, you don't have to go. He said, I am asking you, Nebuchadnezzar will come for you all. You have to go. Hallelujah. And some went, the remnant, he said that, stay here. Some said they want to go to Egypt. And they didn't listen, and they went, and they all died. So, the question is that, can you close that door? The question is that, we need to really pay attention. You, you understand? Because God is going to say certain things to us, but we need to pay attention. Because if we don't pay attention, we will think that what the decisions we are making, like Joseph said, logically. Logically, this is the way to go. But God doesn't work with logic. He works by faith. Amen. It's by faith. It's not by logic. Hallelujah. All right, God bless you. So, um, let's, let's, let's quickly, I don't think we can finish because uh, it's quite interesting because we're not going to uh, verse 6, um, but what we saw in this case for, um, what's his name, for Isaac is that Isaac stayed in Gera. He obeyed, although that was not his plan. This is God's plan. His plan was to move on to Egypt. But God's plan was for him to stay. And he obeyed God's word and he stayed. Hallelujah. So let's see when he stayed. Listen to me carefully. It, it is not always going to be rosy when you stay. Hallelujah. I said it's not going to be always nice when you stay. But it's all part of the process. It is all part of the process. And I also want you to understand that we, we you see, the way we are, even the bishop make mistakes. So we will make mistakes. Let's go to verse 7. And I'll show you what. When the man of that place asked him about his wife, he said, she's my sister, because he was afraid to say, she is my wife. He thought, the men of this place might kill me on account of Rebecca because she's beautiful. Hallelujah. God said, stay. Why can't you trust God and be truthful in all circumstances? He said, stay. If God said, stay, he knows how he's going to protect you. But he began to lie. Why? Because his father is a liar already. His father lied about his wife as well. And it was at the same place. 
So he was just doing what his father did. Amen. And interestingly, if you look, Rebecca was not even, uh, Rebecca has twins already. Rebecca had given birth to Jacob and Esau already when they got to this place. So it's not like some woman that is fresh, fresh. She's already giving birth. So, I mean, she's nice. She's everything. But the point is that you have given birth with this woman and now you are saying that she's too beautiful. People will take, how can somebody come and take your wife like that? And they'll kill you and take it. Now, if, listen to me carefully. If you say that they'll kill you and take her, so you, now you want them to take her. Because if it's your sister, then somebody can marry her. So even if they take her and you don't die, you like. That's even worse. You see somebody else marry your wife. Please, Isaac, don't do that. <laughs> that is even worse. And what, what would Jacob and Esau do? How will they call that man? Hallelujah. Yeah, you know, sometimes out of fear, we make a lot of decisions that are not right. And one thing I want you to understand, because I'm going to show you something here. And I want you to watch out. Please, whatever it takes for you to say the truth, let's begin to do that. It's not going to be easy, but let's learn to be truthful. Because in speaking uh, the truth, we get breakthroughs. We get the blessings of God. God has really spoken, and he said, I'm going to bless you here. Now he started lying, so nothing was happening. Go to the next verse. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. You see, I don't know what the kings at that time used to do up there. Is it not the same thing Jacob, uh, 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 David did? They stand up there and be looking at things they don't have to look at. But that was a blessing for Isaac as well. It was, it was the point of his blessing, in the beginning of his blessing. Because when Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, and listen to me carefully, because I, the key is he's been there a long time. Nothing was happening. God has said, I'm going to bless you, but nothing was happening. Because he's lied. And he's really been saying untruth. I mean, uh, things that are not the truth. So he, his, his blessing was not coming. Hallelujah. And now, <laughs> Abimelech find it for himself. And you see, when, when you are lying about things, now you are hiding to do things, and people are standing up there and they are seeing you. You think nobody is seeing you. Your own wife, you have to go and hide somewhere and start caressing her. Well, I mean, it's your wife. But because you lied about it, you have to hide. Amen. I don't think even they were living in the same house. Because I am a sister. So he couldn't uh, be in the same room. So now he go and meet uh, somewhere. And the king caught them. Look at that. Look at where your lies can take you. Your lies will not let you walk in freedom. Bible says that you shall know the truth. Because if you speak the truth, you walk boldly. Because you are not afraid. You won't change your message. If you are speaking the truth, you will never change your story. Your story will be the same. But if you are not telling the truth, today you say something to this one. Tomorrow you say something to this one. The next day you say something to this one. Hallelujah. Let's learn to be truthful. Let's go on. <laughs> let's, let's see what happened. Verse 9. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, She is really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Verse 10. Then Abimelech said, listen, and this is where, as he spoke the truth, that is where the blessing began. 
Then Abimelech said, what is this you have done to us? One of the men might, have, might well have slept with your wife and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people. Anyone who harms this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Now that he spoke the truth, now he got the king's protection. Hallelujah. If you speak the truth, you get God's protection. Now he got the king's protection. And when he got the king's protection, now remember he's a foreigner. He doesn't have land. But now the king, he has the king on his side. Because of the truth he spoke, now the king came on his side and said that, look, nobody can touch this guy. So now he has the freedom to work anywhere he wants to work. Go anywhere he wants to go. In that town, in that country, now he has the king's support to do whatever he wants to do. And now, once that happened, let's see the next thing. Isaac did what? Until he spoke the truth. He's been there a long time. He never planted. He never planted. The blessing had not come to pass. Nothing was happening in his life because something is blocking him. The lies were blocking him. Many of us, the lies we've been speaking has been a, 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 a hindrance in our life. And we are not progressing, not because there is nothing there for us, not because God has not purposed anything for us, but the moment you stop lying, that barrier will be removed. And you get the king's blessing, and not only that, you have now land to plant. Now you have a job to do. Now the breakthrough will begin to come. Hallelujah. So it is not, listen to me carefully. It is not only in the prophecy. This one, it is not anybody who gave him a word. It is God himself. It is not God speaking through another prophet. It is one on one. God himself speaking to Isaac that I'm going to bless you. But that blessing never happened because of the lies he was, he was always speaking. So the moment the truth came out, he was liberated. He could now walk in freedom. And now that he began to walk in freedom, now he got the land. And Bible says that Isaac planted crops in that land. And the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is a clear example of um, Proverbs 10, 22. Hallelujah. It is, you see, and this is at a time that the people were in hunger. Nothing was happening. But then in the midst of a, of a, of a drought, of a farming, he decided to plant. And as he planted, you see, let me tell you, if the weather is not good, if the land is dry, when you plant, it won't even yield anything. But Bible says that he planted and in the same year he reaped. Now, Isaac planted crops in that land and the same year reaped a hundredfold. He did not get the normal yield. He got an abnormal yield. If God's hand is upon you, it doesn't matter. You can go and meet a lot of people there like you did. But in that same place where people have really done four years and five years, you will not have to do four years or five years. But God will open a door for you. Hallelujah. Because what you need is God. And God's blessing. Any hindrance, any listen to me and listen to me carefully. Many of us are sitting here and we are saying, Lord, it's taking too long a time. Ask yourself, what is the hindrance in my life? Am I obedient to him? Am I putting roadblocks in my own way? Hallelujah. Have I built iron or bronze gates that I can't even break through? Sometimes it's not anybody, it's you. Most of the time it's you. You see, you think that your blessing is going to come from the day. So you're looking too much to the day. 
begin to look up to the Lord. Because once you begin to do that, you do not allow God to really manifest himself. That is why uh, when I, uh, Abraham had gone to rescue Sodom and Gomorrah, when he was coming and the king said, take the boots, he said, no, 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 I'm not taking anything. If I take these things, when you see me blessed, you say that it's your thing. No, no, no. Take everything. I don't want it. I want to really get a first-hand blessing from God so I can give the glory to God. So that nobody can sit anywhere and say that I did him good. Hallelujah. God knows how he's going to do it. God knows how he's going to do it. Because many of us, the reason we are not progressing is that we are you see, how many prophecies have you gotten? But what is blocking the prophecy is not the devil, it's you. Isaac had one from God. What blocked it from coming, coming, coming to pass? His own lies. His own lies. And he stayed there a long time. And nothing was happening. I don't even know what he was doing then. Because he was very busy thinking about when will I meet my wife next. When you could have had your wife all the time in your room. So he's looking for opportunities where nobody's looking. And then, yeah, now you are my wife. When people are coming, hey, you are my sister. Amen. So he never had the freedom to walk in that land. And you will not have the freedom to walk around and to really even see what God is doing because you, your, you have restricted yourself. If you can open up and begin to be truthful and begin to really walk in the freedom that God has given to you, you are going to begin to see God's glory. I'm telling you, you're going to begin to see God's glory. And Bible says that he planted in the land and the same year reaped a hundredfold, not because he's good, not because he, he has uh, 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 intelligence, not because he's a skilled agriculturist, not because of anything, but because of God's blessing. Hallelujah. And you will see, I mean, we can't go on today because uh, our, uh, our time is up, but I'm going to really continue next week because I just want us to really understand that many other things that are blocking us the season we are in right now is a season that God is going to really bless you. I can see God's blessing in the atmosphere. I can really feel it because I, I, I can just see that a new, a, a new, I mean, I don't know how to really say it. Like it's, it's a new uh, um, blessing being released upon us. Hallelujah. God is doing something new. And I can, I can sense it. You know, he took, oh my goodness, he took us through what he took us through for a reason. Hallelujah. And, and, and you remember for about probably maybe eight weeks or 12 weeks now, it's been crisis. We've been learning about crisis and difficulties and challenges and all that. God was just doing that to prepare us that if you can take all this out of the way, I'm not going to really release your blessing. Because you need to know it. You need to know that crisis will come. But how do I deal with the crisis? Because if you don't know how to deal with the crisis, the blessing that he wants to release upon you is not going to come. Amen. Many of us are at a crossroads. We are in a place where we don't really know what to do. Hallelujah. Question two. What sins are we hiding from men that are affecting our freedom and also holding back our blessing? What sins are we trying to hide from men? R remember that anything, any anytime you try to, because you, you because you see, you think men will see, so you hide him, but you forget that God is watching from above. And the blessing is not coming from men. Isaac didn't get what he got because, God, uh, because they gave him land. 
the land was the same land they were planting and nothing was happening. So the land is not where the blessing came from. The people were not a blessing. The blessing came from God. You can really be in the same place with somebody else and you would begin to receive a blessing of God and the person would not. Just like on, uh, on the day of the rapture, he said two people will be there. One will be taken. The fact that, the, oh my goodness, the fact that you are really linked to somebody doesn't mean that his blessing is going to come upon your life. In the same way, it doesn't mean that your blessing is going to go upon his life. Hallelujah. So we need to really understand I'm not saying that it's not good to link up with people. No, that's not what I'm saying. But don't link up with people looking at what they can give to you. If you link up with people, link up with people knowing that how did God really do it for them so you can tap from God. Hallelujah. The key is God, is no man. That's the key. The key is God. It's no man. So we need to begin to understand that. Hallelujah. So my question is that what are the things we are hiding from men that are affecting our freedom and also holding back our blessing? And the, uh, the second question is that do we also sometimes follow the wrongs of people we look up to? Hallelujah. That, that, was, a, that was a wicked one. Hallelujah. His father did it, so he was doing it. Maybe you're looking up to somebody and the person, what, the, you see, let me tell you something. Many people have made that mistake because somebody was telling them a foolish thing. They believe it and they followed it. Yeah, because, you know, uh, because he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, I look up to him. You look up to who? Where is God? And you know, because Isaac cannot tell me that he didn't know that telling the uh, Abimelech that it is his, uh, his wife is his sister was not wrong. He knew it. But he has seen his father do the same thing. Remember when his father went there, he was born. Read from, uh, um, um, how do you call it? Um, we will do that next week. Uh, we will go back to Genesis 21 and look at what happened there. The world and the things. We're going to re read about all that. If you go to Genesis chapter 21, you'll see it. He was born. Amen. Because he was born in Genesis chapter 20. And his father went there in Genesis chapter 21. So he has seen his father do it. The fact that your father did wrong doesn't mean you have to continue in the same wrong. It will block your blessing. The fact that somebody said, I mean, you see, we, we listen to people. And we think that, oh, yeah, yeah, because he said it, I did it. And we knew it was wrong. Because somebody is making a mistake doesn't make, mean that you have to make the same mistake. Because somebody is going in a wrong direction doesn't mean. Because somebody is saying things that are not true and you know they are not true. If you know they are not true, verify. If you are not sure, verify. Don't follow it. Because you go in the same direction. And if you are not, if he was not blessed by God that this man caught him and then asked him, he would have been staying in that place. And although God has said that I'm going to bless you, the blessing would be. And his father had done se several things. God said, I'm going to really give you a son. And he was going ahead of God, taking uh, 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 Hagar, doing other, I mean, and nothing was happening. Amen. We'll pray tonight. I think I have to close here. But you answer my question before we close. Are we, do we also have certain things in our lives that we think, even as we have heard, do we have certain things? Isaac's own was a lie. 
that he 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 uh, really told uh, Abimelech and the people of uh, Gera. Do we have things in our lives? I'm not saying tell me exactly what it is, but just do we have things in our lives that even as we are listening now, we are now really discerning that these are the things that are blocking our blessing. Hello? Are we alive or asleep? Okay, all right. Do we have anything in our lives like that? I don't want you to tell me what it is, but do we have things that now our eyes have been opened and now we know that these things are blocking and we need to get them out of our lives. If it is years, tonight we're going to work on that. I want you to pray from the depths of your heart. I want you to, look, this whole place is for you. Amen. If you don't want your neighbor to hear what you are going to tell God, just move to the corner there. It's between you and God. You know, listen, I want you to understand that if you have understood this revelation, you're going to plant, and it's not going to take a year. You're going to see certain things begin to happen in your life that you would ask yourself, where were, were all these things all along? Certain things are going to be opened up to you. God is going to come your way, just like he did for Isaiah. I know many of you have received a word of knowledge. You have received a prophetic word. You have received a lot of words that have not come to pass. Maybe it is that thing that is blocking it. Because God had told Isaac that, stay here, I'm going to bless you. But nothing was happening because he lied. Until he really opened his mouth and told Abimelech the truth. When Abimelech caught him, Bible says the next verse, Isaac planted crops. What was he doing all along that he didn't plant crops? What was he doing? What was he doing? Why had Abimelech not probably? I don't know. Maybe he had not even been given land. But speaking the truth opened a new door for him. Beloved, I want you to be outstanding. And I want you to, this one is free range. Nobody's going to really tell you what to do. You are searching your own heart. 